The BMP-1 was one of the world's first infantry fighting vehicles and the very first to be adopted by a superpower. A design of the Chelyabinsk tractor plant, the Object 765 prototype was adopted in 1965 and thus became the BMP-1. For the next 15 years, the vehicle would be the premier infantry fighting vehicle of the Eastern Bloc and would thus be manufactured in massive quantities in the Soviet Union and Czechoslovakia. With upwards of 40,000 manufactured, the BMP-1 was still a common sight by the fall of the Soviet Union, but newer technologies had by that time made it obsolete in many regards. In the 1990s, there would be some attempts at modernizing the vehicle to improve its combat potential in Russia, though they would not ultimately see adoption. Welcome to Tank Encyclopedia, I'm Russell, and today I'll be covering Russia's attempts at modernizing the Cold War BMP-1 IFV in the 1990s. If you like what we do and want to see more, don't forget to like the video, and if you haven't already, please subscribe so you don't miss a single upload. But first, a word from ourselves. The Tank and Plane Encyclopedia teams are looking for more writers, either for the articles that appear on our websites and are the basis of these videos, or for the scripts of these videos. So if you've got some decent historical and technical knowledge and writing skills, consider applying on our Discord server, link in the description, and joining our awesome teams. Both positions are paid. Being the first IFV of the Soviet Union, the BMP-1 could not benefit from previous experience and experimentation as much as its successors. While it was in ways revolutionary when its production began, some of the solutions adopted by the BMP-1 would soon reveal their flaws or become obsolete by the end of the Cold War. The most prominent of these is likely the armament. The BMP-1 was armed with the 73mm 2A28 Grom low-velocity gun. Firing the same projectiles as the recoilless SPG-9 gun, the Grom could achieve impressive armor-piercing capabilities for its size and time with heat projectiles, but suffered from having low ammo velocity and light explosive charge. It was poor for infantry support. During the first years of service, it did not even have high explosive shells available. The auto-loading system that fed it was often found to be unreliable, and a number of BMP-1 users, for example Poland or Finland, have removed this loading device over the years. The integrated Malyutka missile was not bad in terms of penetration, but the hatch to reload one into the launch rail over the top of the gun was questionable. In the 80s, when a number of BMP-1s were upgraded to BMP-1Ps, they received a new 9P-135 missile launcher. While it fired more powerful Fago and Conqueror's missiles, it still required the operator to guide the missile from the open hatch. At the turn of the 1980s, the USSR introduced the BMP-2, directly based on the BMP-1. It used a larger turret ring in order to fit a two-man turret with a 30mm autocannon instead of the one-man Grom-armed turret. Autocannons generally became more popular than low-velocity guns on IFVs due to greater flexibility, being able to operate in suppression, mild anti-helicopter duties, as well as often having better velocity and thus accuracy at range, while still potent against lighter vehicles. After the fall of the Soviet Union, the BMP-2 became the standard infantry fighting vehicle of the Russian army. However, despite large numbers of BMP-2 having been manufactured and small numbers of the more advanced BMP-3 entering service, the old BMP-1 was far too numerous to be entirely phased out. There were thousands still in storage, hundreds to low thousands in active service. Furthermore, the vehicle has had a massive export career, and many nations still operated it. Therefore, a sizable potential market for upgrades existed. A first notable attempt at upgrading the BMP-1 was offered by KBP Tula. This KBP, Instrument Design Bureau, had been the designers of many Soviet weapon systems. For example, the advanced 2K22 Tunguska Spag, pretty much all Soviet widely used autocannons designs, and ATGMs, such as the Metis and Conquerors. In the 1990s, the Bureau was working on a new ATGM design, the 9M133 Cornet. In the second half of the 1990s, while work on the Cornet was finishing, Tula developed a turret which combined this missile with an autocannon. It was marketed as retrofittable onto a number of Soviet-era vehicles. 
This was the TKB799 Cleaver, first showcased in 1996 on a BTR-80. The BMP-1, equipped with the Cleaver, would first appear at IDEX-97 in Abu Dhabi. The Cleaver was a weapon station with its own turret basket. It was designed for the BMP's 1,380mm turret ring diameter, at a light weight of 1,500 kilograms, to be installed without modifying the hull. The turret was operated by a single crew member, sitting inside the left half of the turret, with the armament somewhat offset to the left. The main armament of the Cleaver turret was the 30mm 2A-72 autocannon, a modified version of the 2A-42 featured in the BMP-2. The 2A-72 was specifically designed to be lighter at only 84 kilograms and offer better muzzle velocity while firing the same ammunition at a rate of fire of 350 to 400 rounds per minute. Other vehicles which use the 2A-72 include the BMP-3 and the BTR-82A. For use against light fortifications, infantry, soft-skinned vehicles, and other unarmored targets, the 2A-72 could fire the High Explosive Incendiary HEI, shells, which use 49 grams of explosive filler and is fired at a fast 980 meters per second. The shells had an explosive fuse which made them detonate about 4 kilometers after being fired. A complementary tracer shell with identical ballistics was fielded, with a ratio of one tracer for four high explosive in a high explosive belt. For armor-piercing duties, two types of 30mm shells existed. The older 3UBR-6 was a fairly classic armor-piercing shell with a 375 gram core of hardened structural steel. It includes a tracer and is fired at 970 meters per second. At an angle of 60 degrees, it could pierce 29 millimeters at 700 meters, 18 millimeters at 1,000 meters, and 14 millimeters at 1,500 meters. These performances were quite low, only sufficient against light vehicles. A more modern armor-piercing shell existed in the form of the 3UBR-8, an armor-piercing discarding Sabo APDS shell with a tracer. It featured a lighter 222-gram piercing core of tungsten alloy. Fired at a muzzle velocity of 1,120 meters per second, this shell seemed to penetrate against similar RHA armor and at the same angle of 60 degrees. 35 millimeters at 1,000 meters, and 25 millimeters at 1,500 meters. The TKB-799 offered some very modern fire control systems for a Russian IFV at the time. It used an independent two-plane site stabilization and a day-night sight in the form of a thermal imager, as well as a laser range-finding device. The turret featured an automatic electromechanical firing system, it would provide sighting and ranging as well as weapon laying including both lead, elevation, and traverse, which would provide better accuracy, particularly against moving targets. The turret was also designed to allow fairly generous elevation angles of negative 10 degrees to positive 60 degrees, which would allow for moderate anti-aircraft capacities, particularly against helicopters. In general, with the FCS provided by the turret, it was hoped that the 2A-72 would have an effective range of about 2 kilometers in good flat terrain. It appears 300 rounds of ammunition were provided for the 2A-72. Secondary armament was provided in the form of a coaxial 762 by 54 mm R rimmed PKTM machine gun mounted to the right of the autocannon, with seemingly only 200 rounds of ammunition provided. In addition to the 2A-72, the Cleaver turret featured another crucial weapon system, this being Russia's new anti-tank guided missile, also designed by the Tula Design Bureau, the 9M133 Cornet. This was a large caliber, 152mm system. Work on it began a few years before the fall of the USSR, and it was first unveiled in 1994. The Cornet used a semi-automatic beam riding guidance, meaning the missile was aimed using a laser beam aimed at the target from the firing vehicle. In comparison to previous systems, this meant it could be guided from inside of the vehicle. The Cornet was also faster than previous ATGMs, at 250 to 300 meters per second, depending on the missile, meaning it usually has a shorter flight time. By the time of the Cleaver turret's creation, the 9M133-1 missile 
was rated for around 1,100 to 1,200 mm rolled homogeneous armor RHA, penetration on average, and the use of a tandem heat warhead reduced the protection offered by ERA against it. The large caliber of the Cornet also allowed for other uses than merely anti-tank. This manifested with the 9M133F-1 missile, which instead of an armor-piercing shaped charge, contains a thermobaric warhead equivalent to 10 kilograms of TNT and provides significant incendiary effects. Both of these missiles have a maximum flight speed of 250 meters per second and an effective range of 100 to 5,500 meters. On the cleaver, four cornet pods were mounted, hanging to the right of the main turret body itself. It does not appear any reloads were provided with the vehicle, certainly not in the small turret. The potential of four cornets was still fairly significant. The possibility to use either heat or thermobaric missiles also gave some considerable adaptability for the vehicle, allowing it to mount a complement of anti-tank missiles if likely to face high-end enemy armor or thermobaric missiles if facing an opponent using well-fortified positions. The Cleaver was consistently marketed by Tula during the late 1990s, with at times grandiose claims. It was said the BMP-1 with Cleaver had higher firepower than not only the BMP-1 and BMP-2, but also Western IFVs such as the latest Bradley and Martyrs. Though ambitious, these were not necessarily wrong. The 30mm 2A72 was a powerful autocannon, and the Cornet a top-of-the-line modern and powerful missile. However, the Cleaver failed to find any buyers. Cost was likely the reason. While the price of the modernization is unknown, it would likely have been very expensive. Furthermore, Tula was not really a specialist of the BMP hull and seemingly did not offer any modernizations on this front. However, another, much cheaper BMP-1 option, which did not use any technology older than the 1980s, also existed and was also evaluated. Soon after the BMP-1, a complementary IFV had also been adopted. This was the BMD-1, a lighter design made for VDV airborne forces which used the same BMP-1 turret. At the turn of the 70s to 80s, as the BMP-2 replaced the BMP-1, a similar evolution was carried out on the BMD. However, the smaller vehicle could not accommodate the larger turret ring of the BMP-2 turret. Therefore, a 30mm armed turret that fit on the same 1,380mm turret ring as the BMD-1 and BMP-1 was designed for the BMD-2. This was the B-30 turret. Though it had the same turret ring, it was slightly more voluminous, giving it a bit more internal space to the sole turret crewman. By the 1990s, it had been in service and production for more than 10 years. In 1997, a BMP-1 experimentally received the turret. It appears this modernization may have been carried out by the Russian army rather than a design bureau or company. It was a very simple and easy conversion to implement, to the point where one may wonder why it was not considered previously. The main armament of the turret was the 2A42 cannon. It was overall very similar to the previous design's 2A72. Significant differences were that the 2A42 had two different rates of fire, a slow one of 200 rounds per minute and a fast one that reached 550. The shells were the same and fired at the same or almost equal velocities, reaching to the same armor-piercing performances. A similar high elevation of positive 60 degrees was provided for the turret, allowing for impromptu anti-air use. These sights were much more primitive than on the cleaver. While there were periscopes with night vision, there was no thermal imager at all, nor an advanced stabilizer. The B-30 turret was fitted with the same 9P-135 missile launcher as was fitted on the BMP-1P and BMP-2. As on these vehicles, the turret crewman had to expose himself to fire it. The launcher is able to fire the whole offering of Fago and Conker's missiles. The most powerful one available would be the 9M113M, an updated Conker's showcased in 1991. It featured a tandem-shaped heat warhead in order to improve performances against explosive reactive armor, cage armor, and other anti-heat devices. Otherwise, armor-piercing performances were similar at 750 to 800 millimeters of steel and an average speed of slightly above 200 meters per second, the effective range being generally considered to end at 4 kilometers. The BMP-130 appeared to bring no changes to the BMP-1 hull. 
In terms of combat capacities, it was certainly inferior to the vehicle with cleaver turret. However, it was also clearly superior to a Grom-armed BMP-1, while only using mass-produced components already present in Russia's logistical system. In essence, the vehicle could be described as a budget BMP-2, featuring the exact same weapon systems, though it had only one crew member in the turret to operate them instead of two. Ultimately, neither of these 1990s modernizations would be procured in any way. It appears the cleaver turret may have had some influence on some 2000s Ukrainian designs. In this time frame, Ukraine offered a fairly similar turret named Shkval, though with less advanced technology and more Soviet-era features. Mounted on the BMP-1 hull, it actually got small sales in Georgia, Chad, and Turkmenistan. In more recent years, Russia has finally carried out a BMP-1 modernization project, though it would be on a much more limited scale. The BMP-1AM was revealed in 2018 and saw a small upgrading run, 35 vehicles delivered to units operating the BMP-1 in eastern Russia. The BMP-1AM is in many ways inferior to the Cleaver or even the BMP-130, mounting the BPPU turret of the BTR-80A and BTR-82, which only features the 2A72 30mm autocannon and coaxial PKTM. All ATGM capacities in such a vehicle are relegated to a Metis M launcher, not mounted on the vehicle itself, but to be operated by the dismounts outside of the vehicle, a far cry from the four integrated cornets of the cleaver turret. While many would have thought the BMP-1 would no longer be an asset in the Russian army by this point, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, launched on February 24, 2022, would prove to the contrary. A number of Russian BMP-1s have been seen entering combat and then turning up abandoned or destroyed. Some of these losses were outside of sectors where Ukrainian separatists operate, albeit the numbers were smaller by magnitudes than the BMP-2s and BMD-2s lost. More and more BMP-1s have been seen pulled out of storage due to recent losses and the small-run BMP-1AM version has already been butchered in Ukraine. While the situation of the Russian invasion of Ukraine is certainly not simply tied to the quality of Russian vehicles, one can imagine how a BMP-1 with a cleaver turret or even a BMP-130 would prove a far more useful asset in a modern conflict in comparison to one still fitted with the antiquated and anemic 73mm Grom. This concludes our look at Russia's 1990s BMP-1 modernizations. If you find this topic interesting, we already have covered the BMP-1AM in the past. If you want more videos on various BMP-1 modernizations and modifications, let us know in the comments. If you aren't already, consider becoming a subscriber so you don't miss a single video. If you want to contribute more directly, consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. The money comes back to you in the form of bigger and better videos. Until next time, Keep us in your sights.